What's up, everybody? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This is Adam Lee with another great episode of A Singer's Truth. Now, this is a new edition. Of course, we have the Musician's Corner series. Today, you got another opportunity to speak to a great musician that I admire and I'm so excited to talk to. This guy is Jared Lee, an amazing up and coming artist here in the RVA area. And I could not wait to sit down and talk to him. Everybody, check out this clip and you will see why. <laughs> All right, y'all, I got my good friend, Jerry Leaf. I am so stoked to have finally sat down and talked to you. You are one of the new musicians here at CORC. And uh, but before we get into all of that, all those questions and everything, how are you feeling in this, this climate that you're living in right now? How are you doing? Um, I'm actually doing all right. You know, just trying to keep a level head, you know, yeah. just keep going and ignore what's really, you know, what's going on. I mean. You gotta take it serious at the end of the day, you know, but you know, just gotta, you know, you gotta live life. Yeah. Is, do you think that, mu with everything going on, do you think that music is like your outlet to really express how you feel? And, and it, have you, have you utilized that even more now? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, I had, I had been off of work for, you know, three months. Yeah. So having the time to um, practice, having time to learn new material, having time to, pray and invest into my craft mm -hmm. um i can say this pandemic you know has been a blessing absolutely you know because for me i i know like I, I i pray for time now was this the time i was looking for <laughs> no not really exactly from a social standpoint exactly nah. um but i mean i can look at it now once this thing goes away it's just like i had i got my I had my time so yeah. I know, it's a blessing. I know a lot of people have that same, you know, kind of sentiment. You know, they kept asking God for time, and and finally we got it. You know, and I feel like it's, it's a blessing in disguise in a sense. Right. And um, I, I know for me, you know, this pandemic birthed my YouTube channel, really. Right. So you know, the producing in a pandemic. Exactly. <laughs> Come on. That's it. So. Did you did you have any moments that really kind of pushed you out there, or you know, God really dealt with you that you felt like, okay, God, you're birthing this. And I'm going to utilize this opportunity to really um, seek your face. It was after I decided to really kind of take um, pushing my single out a little serious. Mm. I needed, you know, like I said, I needed time. Even though I put that out before the pandemic, yeah, but yeah, yeah. you know, I still needed time. Still needed, you know, funds or whatever. It's just like God, I'm like. I want to do this, but I'm like, I need the funds. So that Absolutely. led to me now working full time on making close to, I don't know how much a year, but um, making enough. It, but um, they don't need to know. Right. Music drop, that was amazing. I, I love supporting our own, our local artists. I appreciate it. You know, and, and of course, when it came out, I was racing to get that and listen to it. And I was just blown away. What was that experience like to create that from start to finish? From start to finish, it was honestly me fooling around practicing. Um, yeah. Listening to different genres of music. And one day I was just playing one thing and I was just like, oh, I like that. Let me loop that. 
Looping that led to a beat. Looping mm -hmm. that led to bass, keys, wow. and everything kind of came together. Honestly, what I had done before, it was way different than what I put out. Yeah. You know, so a lot of that time took, it took a lot of time of thinking and kind of stepping away from it to kind of grow for myself to grow musically. Mm. There was a lot of changes. There were a lot of self, there was a lot of self doubt, but I, I'm pretty, pretty proud about it. Not even pretty proud. I'm proud about it. I'm sure. I'm sure. What's your influence though? Like when you were creating the music, what influenced you the most or who maybe? Moonchild. Definitely Moonchild. Um, <laughs> it's weird. It doesn't really sound, the song doesn't really sound like Moonchild, but that kind of got me, you know, and I always like enjoyed watching spoken words yeah, yeah, of yeah. people just like, you know, doing their spoken word and that there's like music in the background. Mm. That was, that was kind of like my approach to that, to Psalms 150. Mm. You know, and a lot of times, you know, I had a lot of people ask me like, why is it called Psalms 150 and it's not a churchy, you know, I was just like, it's just my expression of Psalms 150. I'm sure the Bible didn't mean that we had to, you know, I had to have a choir. Oh, absolutely. You know, all absolutely. That stuff. I was just, it was just my impression of it, you know? Yeah. And, you know, like I said, I'm proud about it, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, Psalms 150 is really talking about the instruments. It is. Really. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he wants everything, everything to praise the Lord. So I, I get that. You utilize, you, you utilize, I guess, the sound rather versus, you know, just our voice. Right. I mean, I had, I, you know, I had, I had my dad on it and I was kind of like going back and forth if I, if I just wanted it to be instrumental or wanted yeah. to have something. But for me, it was just like, I wanted to explain, I wanted Psalms 150 to be explained. Mm, yeah, yeah, way. yeah. I love that. So, you know, I was just like, you know, I told my dad, I was just like, all right, you can do the, he was like, what do you want me to read for King, King James? I was like, nah, <laughs> I said kind of a new life, mm -hmm. the message Bible kind of, you know, I'm like, I just don't want this to reach the gospel scene. I want to reach other, you know, I love so so people can that. have an understanding. I love that. So, because I, I feel like a lot of times people look at, you know, uh, people outside the church look at the people in the church as just these scary people and all these big words yeah. and all this other stuff. And true, they always hug them asunder and around people and all that other stuff. But no, nah, that's not, that's a promise. That's not us. Um, that's definitely not me. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to, wanted it to be a song and I want it. God to be glorified in that, in it, but in a way for everybody to understand. I got you, I got you. When you put out the single, were you ever intimidated by kind of putting it out there? Or were you, did you feel like you had this confidence to to kind of put yourself out in that spotlight? That was, what was that, the 28th? There was a lot of good music that came out that day. Yeah. Uh, which was, I was just like, out of all the days, why the day? No, nah, I mean, I wasn't really intimidated about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I knew, like, I was confident about it. I was just like, you know, Absolutely. I know the ones that, that are going to support, they're going to support. The Absolutely. ones that don't support, they're going to continue not to support. Like I said, it's my, it's my project. You know, I don't really have to explain it to anybody. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's out there. Absolutely. You know, there's nothing, it's out there. I was I was definitely confident about it. I mean, I had my self doubts about like, oh man, are these people going to support? You know, are they going to listen to it? Mm -hmm. You know, and there's still people that I'm wondering that did listen to it or not. But I mean, it's cool. It's cool. There's it's, no it's, love loss. It's you your. Know? It's yeah, it's your my good. project. At the end of the day, like I still mm -hmm. am like in awe about the fact that I can search my name on Spotify, mm. YouTube, mm. Apple Music see my name, see my picture, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. How does that make you feel though, to be in that position? It's amazing, it's amazing. Like, I think about like, you know, my kids, you know, like future kids. Come on. Like, they search my name up, cause that's how I was like with my parents, you know, I want to, you know, search them up, you know, I see my dad, messages on YouTube, uh, and stuff, you know, preaching at conventions, uh, congresses or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, seeing that, I was just like, oh wow, yo, that's my dad. And to have that on a on a big platform like Apple Music and just the way music is today, you know, it's it's cool. It's yeah, really it's, really a, cool. it's a streaming world. I can only I can only imagine what's gonna what, what it's gonna be in ten years. Oh, of course, of it's course. crazy. So let's let's talk about your your upbringing though, because what was that like though? I mean, growing up with your parents in the church and your dad and in, you know in the ministry, what was that like? And, and do you think that plays a, a part in in you? Definitely, you know, definitely, because. I think I definitely learned a lot of discipline. Yeah. As far as the music and understanding that you gotta, 
you got to be in tune with God before you get up and play. You got to have the right All heart. Right now. You got to have the come on. You know the right mindset. You know you just because a lot of people just get up there and they just play. You know whatever. And there are moments that are missed. Like I can't stand it when there are moments that are missed. I can't stand it when spirit is the spirit is quenched <laughs> because people want to preach. You know it's mm. I can't stand it. So I, I will say that I'm very very thankful for you know the discipline and my up my upbringing for that. You know that's awesome. With, the, with my parents, you know, yeah. I, I really, really appreciate them for that because now it's like, you know, I'm, I'm coming here and I know like, I need to pray. I need to, you know, get my heart and mindset, you know, and yeah. I really need to watch and be in tune with the service and understand like, all right, we need to go here. We need to stay there or get out of this, mm. you know. And how, how important is that though as a musician? Because, you know, that's, I, I feel that a musician is so much more important than any singer, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because, and, and I don't want to discredit, you know, singers. This is a singer's truth. Of course, I love talking to singers. As a singer myself, I, I understand how important we are to the ministry, but the musicians, they start and they finish and even carry on the service after, you know, everybody else is right. still done. You know, it's like, it, it, the musicians are so pivotal to to how worship should be right and so that's that's amazing to hear you explain it that way you know how how important is that to understand that and to keep and to maintain that level of expertise? honestly it's I, I look at it as like it's a big responsibility you know yeah, absolutely um you know it's like yeah it's a big responsibility and honestly it's really cool you yeah. know music is such a big role Plays such a big part in church now. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm not saying that it hasn't before, but I just think right now, 2020, music is and church has definitely played a big part. You know, people. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always learned that you know, your gift has can bring somebody out of depression. Your gift can get some can bring somebody to Christ. Your gift can do this. Your gift can do. It can do a lot of things. Absolutely. You know, so having that title as a as a musician, being a musician in the church is is an amazing thing and it opens up so many doors wow so many doors outside of the church absolutely you know? absolutely we i mean we we know a lot of people that have been in that position absolutely here even in this church you yes know I mean? mm -hmm. um can i ask you this did you know growing up in church let's go back to that you know do you feel like your your parents kind of through music at you or is that something that you always wanted to pursue uh honestly it, growing up be honest now <laughs> growing up in new york i was i was interested in drums uh -huh. um i was around people like uh kashia hooper mm -hmm. a young kashia hooper i'm not saying you old and i like that doc but uh the younger younger yeah um <laughs> You know, my dad, he, you know, he played drums. Yeah. You know, I was around guys like Miles Johnson. You know, he's well, like I didn't great. know your dad played drums. That's... Yeah, he, yeah. I didn't even he, know he played, he played drums for the, the, the cathedral choir, you oh, know, wow. on, on Sunday night services. It's, just, it's on YouTube somewhere. Just, just look <laughs> at the Greater Refuge Temple 19, I don't know. Because y'all are from um, Harlem, mm -hmm. the, the mother church. The mother church. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, so it really, I started out with drums. Mm -hmm. And then as I grew up, you know, being, you know, five, six, seven, I wanted to be, you know, I kind of got out of the music thing. I was just like, oh, I want to be a wrestler and all that <laughs> other good stuff. It's, it's crazy, you know. Yeah. But then um, we were at a convention in 2010. I believe that was Orlando. And my parents, they had to march in or whatever, and they had nobody to watch us. So I don't, I don't know if Brandon remembers this, but my dad had asked Brandon if he could watch us. You know, so we were all in that little corner, you know, and I'm just looking and seeing how these guys are playing the songs and seeing how Brandon is, you know, um, you know, leading these guys, mm -hmm. you know, and showing, telling them like, yo, this is what we need to do. This is how, how it needs to be done. I was, I love that. And ever since that convention, I don't think I ever changed my mind about what I wanted to do. Wow. So it's because of that convention and because of that night that um, I really decided that I wanted to, you know, play 
music. I hadn't decided yeah. like what instrument. I was still kind of invested with drums. So. I, I love that that you have that moment because I, I love to ask people, you know, what what aha moment did you experience? And um, you know, the stuff like that growing up in church and and seeing people that influence you in that way. Is there anybody else that kind of influenced you or? You're now, you're today to keep pushing forward, like um, your dad. Well, yeah, I mean, so I, I growing up, um, I didn't know many musicians. Mm -hmm. If they played at a Cool JC convention or a Congress, I knew them. So <laughs> you had guys, you know, Brandon, Adrian, mm. Daryl Woodson, Brandon Wilkes, Shawan Andrews, mm, yeah, uh, Brian Johnson. I knew those guys. Those amazing you know? artists, yes, and. Um, you know, even even you know, in here in you know in Richmond, just you know, having Friday night services, and you see, oh, Calvary, Calvary two at the time, yeah. Calvary two, the choir singing. So I'm just like, oh yeah, because you just knew like Brandon and Adrian came through, and Lee or Brandon Wilkes or Daryl, they were going to smack whatever they played. So I, I looked at that as a treat. Yeah. And, you know, my dad and I, we would be like, oh my gosh, they're just killing, they're killing, they're killing. So, I mean, it was, that was my foundation for real, for real. But as I grew, you know, I knew I had to expand outside of the organization. So yeah. guys like Mike Burrell, and Jason White, Glenn Gibson Jr., James Carney. That's a lot of guys. I don't, I don't want to name everybody, but um, I know I Dennis Ridley. That. Dennis Ridley. I get that. Uh, yes, exactly. I yeah. think this is down with him. That's another one. So just those guys, Devontae Spriggs. I'm sorry. You know, Glenn, James, Dennis, um, MJ, mm. um, Kel. I can say those guys are, you know, big brothers to me. You know, I can hit those guys up anytime. And just Absolutely. Absolutely. Pick their brains, you know. Yeah. They're definitely family to me. I got to talk to you about one of the greatest things that I'm excited about is that you started your own. Oh yeah. You now Jesus. have something that is your own. And I really want to talk to you about that. Let's, what, what is it and how did that start? Tape Productions kind of goes way back to a bunch of name changes. I had Jared Leaf Productions, JL Music, but music spell funny mm -hmm. productions. Uh, I've had, you know, I kind of got started early before I really realized like, you know, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Like, what am I doing? Why am I putting out a logo? You know, and I don't really even know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So after I put out the single, I was just like, you know, I really need to kind of double down on this, you know, if I'm gonna do this, you know, because I've kind of, you know, I, at that point I realized, all right, producing is what I want to do. I want to make music, I want to tour, I want to do all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so I need to brand myself in a way, but also be a brand to help others. Cause I'm 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 not that gonna I'm not gonna be that kind of musician where I'm just like, oh, I'm sticking with the family, I ain't gonna, you know, help out anybody else. You know, I wanna help everybody, you know. Exactly. And, and right. like I said, I'm still learning, I'm not the best keyboard player out here, you know. So I mean, but I do appreciate the people that but he's amazing. <laughs> he's, you, but, you're trying to be humble. It's all right, uh, you can be I just, I, but I appreciate the people that, you know, that do hit me up. Yeah. You know, that do want my services, whether it's keys, mm -hmm. aux, consulting, you know. You know, I'm doing a lot of consulting now, which is crazy, but. Um, it's not crazy. It's amazing. It's, it is amazing. It is God ordained. So but, I, want, I want to show the shirt, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tape Productions, I am ecstatic. Y'all, we are creating, we are creating a legacy. This is producing in a pandemic. This is, is the awesome. time I was talking about earlier. Awesome. And I have a talented friend, uh, Reggie Davis. He uh, did the logo for the um, shirt. And I mean, the shirts were selling like hotcakes mm. at one point, um, which you can still get a shirt, by the way. So the link will be right there. It will be. Yeah. We're gonna put it right there at the bottom. You can get a shirt. Yeah, then I mean, I just have a lot of people. People are like, you know, I need this shirt and this color. Um, it's it's just crazy. It's just yeah. like this is my shirt. You know, my shirt is people in New York, Connecticut, Michigan, D.C., Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina. It's come on, God has put it's his stamp crazy. on it. He it's put crazy. His stamp 
on it. What's next for for you and, and your production company? Honestly, you it's you know I, I'm working on some things. Working on some things. Um, as far as new music goes, mm -hmm. working on that too. Okay. Um, definitely coming soon. Definitely coming soon. Everything is just coming together right now. You know. Oh, yeah. I'm back at work now, so I'm trying to trying to you know. I just want to be. I want to be financially stable with myself. Agreed. To where the business can take care of me, so I can pay still pay bills on time. Amen. So I can still, you know, pay everything on time and not have to be any in any kind of debt, or whatever. So I can leave my nine to five mm -hmm. and let this be my whatever hours I want it to be. I know you that's know. right. Y'all check out my guy, Jared <laughs> Lee. I'm telling you, he's an amazing artist and he's going places. He's going places. But number one, number one, he got God on his side. Oh yeah, That's the definitely. Priority. You can't do nothing without God. I'm telling you, y'all. Please check out his latest album. I'm gonna put it in the description. No, I'm sorry. Check out his latest. Hey, let's single. Speak of album, let's <laughs> And I understand that's good. Check out his latest single. His link is going to be in the description. I want y'all to listen to it. I mean, he is a great, great artist, up and coming in RVA, in the world, rather. That's what I should be saying. He's up and coming in the global community. And I'm just so thankful that you sat down with me and I support anybody who is who wants to go out there and actually do it in Jesus' name. I support this. Thank you. Man. So, I appreciate it. Oh, uh, one more thing. Shout out to. Aaron Jenkins, if it wasn't for Aaron pushing me to be, to exactly. reach my potential, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be here because yes. I was definitely scared to play here. Um, um, yeah, but definitely shout out to Aaron because he's definitely been one of, one of the people in my ear. You know, if I messed up, if I did something stupid, if, or if I did something right, you know, I'm gonna hear it from Aaron, you know. Oh, wow. So I, I really appreciate Aaron. Aaron's definitely one of my best friends. You know, he's fan, awesome. he's, he was, Cousin first, but he's definitely a best friend, you know, so I really appreciate him for that. I appreciate y'all for tuning in to yet another edition of A Singer's Truth, but we're going with the Musician's Corner for this episode. However, guys, I always say give someone deserving a call, tell them you love them, and show them that you care, because love is an action word. I will see y'all in the next Singer's Truth. Peace.